Blender 4 release date is fast approaching and here's all the essential info that you need about the coming changes. Firstly, you can find all the release notes in a nicely put together document on Blender's site. It's not actually that easy to find. You have to go to downloads, then builds, then latest changes. That's definitely the best starting place for most people. It's fairly straightforward to look through and all the info's there. The good news for people learning Blender, going through tutorials and courses, there aren't any major interface changes. So all the tutorials and courses you see from Blender 3 onwards are still all relatable. Speaking of courses, at Game Dev TV we have a Black Friday sale. In our ever increasing efforts to make learning affordable, we've started early so you can get amazing discounts on courses and bundles of courses, links in the description. And thanks for putting up with the advert. Now there's a couple of changes in Blender 4 you'll need to look out for. First is the principal BSDF node, so the default material node. It looks slightly different. Basically it's had a few updates making it better, but they've just moved a few things around. It's easy to figure out, all the main aspects are still fairly obvious. However, one thing that might throw you is the subsurface scattering. It used to have its own separate colour and now it's linked to the base colour. The other thing that's slightly different is for metallic materials. You have a tint under the specular. It's fun to play with and gives you more options for your metallic textures. The coat and the sheen have also been changed slightly. Really, you kind of have to read the documentation and play with it to work out what's different there. But again, it's nothing that will break your projects, but they're certainly worth having a bit of a play with. Another thing to watch out for is in the modifier panel. They split up the menus slightly, so again, there's nothing to worry about as the modifiers are the same, just in sub-menus. This could make it a little bit of a pain for beginners to find things, but they have a search option, so you should be fine. And the great thing about that search option is that it tells you where to find things in the future. One other thing that's different and improved and will probably make the most difference to the most amount of people using Blender is the changes they have made to snapping. The snapping menu is still the same, but when snapping's turned on, if you press the G key to grab, then the B button to select base point, you can then choose which part of the object you're snapping. This makes it much easier. And by the way, you can find the keyboard shortcuts at the bottom when you start a tool like pressing G, for example, in case you forget that it's the B key that you need to press for base point. Now there are some exciting big features to experience and try out. AGX is the new color management, so basically more detailed renders with a better way of dealing with lighting. It's on by default, you don't have to do anything except enjoy better renders. Light linking is another new feature. You can now say which objects are affected by which lights. So when you select a light, you can go into the object properties and under shading, you can select which objects you want to be affected by that light. And you can also do this with shadows as well. This does only seem to be available in cycles at the moment though. Now the next one's a bit beyond me to be honest, but node tools. For the advanced users out there, you can now program stuff with geometry nodes rather than coding things in Python. There's been a few updates to nodes, but for the most part, I imagine you already know about the updates if you're experimenting with this kind of stuff. So good luck to you. There's also a fair few updates to rigging and animation such as the pose library and bone layers or bone groups. These are all really helpful and welcome changes. They don't really break anything though, and they're relatively straightforward changes which are intuitive and easy to get to grips with. So you can just enjoy them. There's a few developments in the graph editor which look really great. Again, they're additions rather than changes for the most part, so nothing will really break the things you're working on. So those are the big changes for Blender 4. There's also some really exciting features coming out in Blender 4.1 to look forward to as well. So I can't wait to see what they come up with. Thanks for watching and happy blending.